Good afternoon from the land of our country, Bharat. It's our pleasure to welcome you to this historic conscious planet, Save Soil. This is that event at Jamnagar. My name is Ishuta Shah, publicly known as RJ Ishuta. I'm stunned to see the way thousands of people have gathered to celebrate the welcome of Sadhguru as he enters India after his journey through 26 nations and above 20,000 kilometers. It's no small deal. 70 days since Sadhguru embarked on this journey, 2 billion people have expressed their support to save the soil moment. This is truly unprecedented that people from all the walks of life have come around joining in their hands to work together for one cause beyond nationality, race, religion, gender and other identities. After riding through 26 nations and over 20,000 kilometers in extreme weather conditions across Europe, Central Asia and the Middle East, Sadhguru is all set to enter India through our very own Jamnagar in Savrashtra, Gujarat. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our privilege that he has chosen our beloved city to begin this much awaited India leg of this journey. I am so proud as we see it all. Look at it all. We are currently at the new Bedi Port Jamnagar. This whole place with all so many people around, we are vibing high. All set to have a Dhamaka welcome of Sadhguru. Lots of emotions being felt. Colorful setup. As you can see, women and men dressed in the colorful costumes. Cultural performances happening by people of Gujarat. Dolis are beating the drums and the heat is not even being felt. We all are drenched with enthusiasm, happiness, excitement and so much of love for this moment. I'm sure it is an experience worth a watch. This moment is worth a wait. Let me tell you, we all have been waiting for this moment. Today calls for a lot and lot and lots of drum rolls. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to witness the welcome of our dearest Sadhguru.
it uh, there are no there are no words to describe what it means to be back in india well uh, the safe soil movement has picked up momentum across the world and it has become the subject matter of uh, various governments right now 74 nations have signed up many others are examining the safe soil policy and we are very confident that the world will turn in this direction and of course india will many european nations have already invested large sums towards soil regeneration 3 months ago nobody was talking about soil today the world is talking about soil thanks to the support of the people the media and the volunteers all over the place who worked hard for this 70 days we've been on the road fantastic to be back in india whether it is jamnagar or coimbatore bharat is bharat for me हेलो मीडिया ना सब बंधुओं ने विनंती छे कि आप सब पोता स्थान लई लिये आप सब पोता स्थान लई लिये और डिसिप्लिन ने जाड़े एक छोटी सी रिक्वेस्ट सभी दोस्तों से कि स्टेज के आगे का हमारा जितना भी पार्ट है आप उसको थोड़ी देर के लिए खाली कर दे आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरी वन टू प्लीज Be seated on your respective seats. <laughs> I can stand up and talk. मैं एक छोटी सी request आप सभी से करना चाहूँगा. आप सभी अपनी अपनी जगहों पर अपना स्थान ले. दोस्तों आज जामनगर शहर के लिए एक ऐतिहासिक दिन है दिस इज द गोल्डन डे फॉर जामनगर सिटी हमारे हिज हाइनेस जाम साहेब बापू की ओर से उनके रिप्रेजेंटेटिव के तौर पे श्री एकताबा सोडा की ओर से आप सभी का स्वागत है एंड टुडे वी हैव द लेजेंडरी सदगुरु बी दास एवरी वन जोरदार तालियां हो जाए एवरी
गुड इवनिंग जय माता जी आप सौनो अही जाम साहेब ना आंगड़े प्रताप विलास पैलेस मा खूब खूब स्वागत करू छु आज अपना आंगड़े एक एवं अवसर आ चढ़ो कि जे इतिहास ने पुनरावर्तित कर आज थी दायकाओ पहला जयरे बीजू विश्वयुद्ध चाली रूत तेरे पोलेंड एवं बाड़कों जेने कोई आशरो आप नू तेरे अपना महाराजा जाम साहेब दिग्विजय सिंह जी आपू एमने आ बा ने नहीं के फ्त आशरो आप परंतु तमने शिक्षण तमने खोराक पोशाक मवजत आ बधू कर एमनी एक ऐतिहासिक घटना है जे बेड़ी बंदर बोर्ड थी घटना शेप लई चुकी थी आज फरी वक्त एक एवं प्रसंग आयो है अपना आंगणे कि जयरे सदगुरु जग्गी वासुदेव ईशा फाउंडेशन स्थापक अपने त्या पधारिया है बेड़ी पोर्ट मार्फते तो ये आ एक ऐतिहासिक घटना है तो आप सब एमने बिरदा ले सो टू मिनिट्स आप सबने ख्याल हसे कि जाम साहेब बापू जी रीते अँ चित्र बतावे कि जाम साहेब बापू प्रकृति प्रेमी है सदगुरु प्रकृति प्रेमी है तो आज सेव सोइल आशापुरा में बने भेगा थी गया है तो आ तो केव अवसर कहवाय बने प्रकृति प्रेम आज आप आंगणे एवं अवसर लाखो जय महापुरुषों भारतनी पंचोतेरमी अमृत महोत्सव स्वतंत्रता तेरे अपना नेशनल हीरोस ने अपने याद करे ये तो इतिहास ना हीरो अपनी सामें तो जीवता जागता नेशनल हीरो आज उभा है सत्यावीस देश में तीस हजार किलोमीटर सिक्सटी फाइव इयर्स की एज पर आज सेव सोइल मुहिम चलावी ने विविध देशों साथे एमओयू साइन कर आप आंगणे पधारिया है तो बापू तरफ थी आपने सौ ने एक नम्र अरज है कि सदगुरु जग्गी वासुदेव साथ आज राजवी परिवार जोड़ू है तो जामनगर की जनता मुहिम में जोड़ाई सदगुरु सेव सोइल मुहिम ने हजी गति आपे हजी वेग आपे आप वड़वाओ ने हजी गौरव अपा एवं जामनगर की जनता ने एक नम्र अरज है हूँ एक तबा सोडा आज सदगुरु स्टेज पर आप सब साथ एक वक्त जोरदार ताड़ियों स्वागत करू छु fortune that uh, the first step that i take in the sacred land of bharat is in jamnagar as uh, ekta ji was was mentioning that when the whole world rejected these children from poland the same people who fought wars with them rejected the children it is here the compassion of Jamnagar which accepted these children and gave them a life so this is this is the highest level of expression of humanity 
which is we… which is what we need today. We have divided the world in the name of nations, in the name of race, religion, caste, creed, in how many ways we have divided the world. If we do not understand what is the all-unifying cosmic consciousness, at least everybody can understand that we all come from the same soil, we are all living off the same soil. When we die, we all go back to the same soil. No matter what is your religion, no matter what is your caste, no matter what is your nationality, you go back to the same soil. So Save Soil is not only an ecological movement, it is also a way of bringing human beings to together because as human beings, we have reached such a powerful status that we are even capable of destroying this world many times over. That is the kind of capacity we have. When we have such capacities, when we have such capabilities, it becomes extremely important that we find common factors between us. Rather than picking for differences, it is important we find common factors. And the common factor is definitely soil <coughs> Nobody can deny soil is a common factor for all of us. If we get it now, it'll be wonderful. Otherwise, one day when we are buried, anyway we will get it, that we all come come from the same soil, it's best to get it now and transform this possibility. This has become a necessity. Who would ever think, hundred years ago, who would ever think that soil has to be saved? There was no such thing. But this is what we have done in one hundred years, nearly seventy to hundred years' time. We've brought the world to a place where we are talking about soil extinction that actually soil is moving towards extinction. What extinction means is, a handful of soil, fertile soil, will have eight to ten billion organisms. But today, those organisms are dying at a rate that you can't imagine. Twenty-seven thousand species are dying per year. At this rate, in another twenty-five to forty years' time, we will come to a place where we will not be able to grow much on this land, and our populations will be well over nine billion people. That is a humongous disaster. The problem with us is, we have a very short memory. Just seventy years ago, we used to have terrible famines in this country. Gujarati people should remember famines in the country. There used to be terrible famines. As all of you know, 1942, the Bengal famine took 3.2 billion people, 2 point… Uh, I'm sorry, 3.2 million people in four months' time. When I say famine, you must understand, famine is the worst way to die for a human being because it's not like war, somebody is going to shoot you. It is a slow death, three to four months, it's a slow fade and it's a terrible way to die for human beings. That was happening everywhere in the world at one time. We got organized enough to come overcome that. But once again, the entire world is driving towards a famine in the next twenty-five, thirty years' time. This is why Save Soil is very important. I will not go into the details of how to save soil, what to do, but right now the important thing is, we must understand, governments are not elected to do something fantastic. Governments are elected just to fulfill people's mandate. Where is people's mandate for long-term well-being of the nation? In which country have people stood up and said that we are concerned about the long-term well-being of the nation or our children? Everybody is asking for little, little things. They're asking for tax rebates, they're asking for this discount and that discount <coughs> I'm sorry <laughs> and they're getting it. It is time that si at least sixty percent of the adult population must stand up and say we are concerned about the future well-being of the nation and the world. Because when it comes to soil, when it comes to soil ecology or organisms in the world, our national boundaries mean nothing. Soil organisms function as a global phenomena. It is very important, it happens everywhere in the world. I'm very happy to tell you that seventy-four nations have already signed up for Save Soil Movement. The <laughs> and I also addressed the COP15 in Africa and one hundred and ninety-seven parties who were there 
covering 93, 193 nations and uh, groups of people like uh, European Union, Caribbean countries and Commonwealth. All of them have taken soil as a very serious thing right now. Just four months ago, soil was not even in the conversation. For the first time, soil has come to the conversation. I beseech every one of you, I request every one of you that you must keep the soil in conversation for the next few months till the policies are made in the world that people should talk about soil, people should express their concern about soil. Today, every one of you have a smart companion with you. No, I'm not talking about your wife or husband. I'm talking about the phone that you have. You have a smart phone. So when you have such a powerful medium, well, you may be sending some silly messages on it, but this is a powerhouse. If you use it properly, you as an individual can reach the whole world. That is the power of what you're carrying in your hands. I want you to use this and very, very important that we keep soil as a priority for the next few months so that <coughs> policies can be pushed through. We have written 193 policy documents for 193 nations, depending upon their latitudinal position, economic, uh, economic uh, situations, soil types and their agricultural traditions. We prepared these handbooks and we, are give, we have given this to all the nations. So this will happen, it just needs people's push. Can I depend on you? That's not everybody. Can I depend on you? If you have any love for your children, this must be done because it is not a philosophy, it is not a teaching, it is not a religion that you want your children to live better than you. But right now I want you to understand, we are dismantling the foundations of good life for future generations. If there is no rich soil, right now India's organic content per average is 0.68 percent. The minimum that is needed to call soil as soil is three percent, but we are 0.68 percent. We are on the verge of desertification, that's where we are. So if we are really interested in the future generations, because it's intrinsic to you that you want your children to live better than you, when this is the case, how can you sleep through this? Is sleep a crime? Hello? Is sleeping a crime? No, sleeping is not a crime, but if you sleep through your life, you will be a disaster. And disasters are always worse than crimes, I want you to know this. That's what we're talking about. We have this habit of sleeping through our problems and then we enter a disastrous situation and then we grieve over it after it's over. How many times have we done it in the past? Let's not do it now because this disaster will be very difficult to walk out of. Not all of us are going to walk out of it because it's serious, serious issue. Every responsible scientist is pointing out by 2040 or 2045, we'll be producing 40 percent less food and our populations will be over nine billion. <coughs> That's not a world you want to live in. That's definitely not a world where you want to leave your children. Mike. Sadhguru, wonderful to have you here in Jamnagar and it's an honor and a privilege to be able to talk to you about soil. Having traversed through 27 nations and having had a wonderful response and certain promises towards joining the Save Soil Movement, signing MOUs. Sadhguru, where do you think India stands in terms of the future of soil? You mentioned that we are very close to desertification. Um, what is the sort of action plan if we are looking at it from now, the next 15, 20 years? What is the first thing that people need to address? We will use our smartphones, we will join the movement. Everybody's eager to know, 
um, how do we contribute? What is everybody's contribution? We won't be doing kitchen gardens. We won't be doing small um, contribution. But if there has to be a united moment from people themselves, what are your recommendations, Sadhguru? So today we are addressing uh, urban population. Obviously, they are not farmers. But farmers need incentive-based push because farm economy is so fragile. If you touch it, it'll collapse. That's where it is. Not just in this country, in almost every country. For example, in United States, fifty percent of the farmers have not seen a dollar of profit for the last twelve years. There have been whole families shooting themselves. So, farm economy is very, very fragile. You should not touch it unless there is an incentive-based push. Right now, the simple thing we are asking for is, now average is 0.68 in different farms, it may be different. If you institute an incentive that all those farmers who get it to three percent will get a certain incentive, and if that incentive is attractive enough, most farmers will go for it. And the next thing is, we are working with global bodies to crack this uh, what is called as carbon credit. So if farmers raise the organic content in the soil, it will sequester a certain amount of carbon dioxide or carbon. So for this, in the world there is a reward. Yes, sir. That reward we must get. Right now for last seven years, in uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, we've been trying to crack this carbon credit. <coughs> it's designed against the farmer. You just can't crack it. We have used all kinds of our teams working. We have not been successful. So we are asking the global bodies to simplify the carbon credit scheme. Right now it's designed for industry and we are asking the farmers to go through the same process. It's just impossible to do this. So that should happen, we are working for that. The third thing is, See, today the nutritional value in the food has dropped so dramatically, even if you're eating a stomach full, you're not getting enough nutrients in the system. One reason why there are so many chronic ailments and there are so many psychological ailments is because micronutrients are absent in the food. Well, not much study has been done in the rest of the world, but in United States it's been found that early twentieth century, what nutrients vegetables had, today's vegetables have ten percent of that, ninety percent drop. If you ate one orange in 1920, today you will have to eat eight oranges to get the same nourishment. So this is what we have done to our food. So if nutrition has to come back, organic content has to come back. So now, instead of labeling food as just organic, which is just a marketing term. See, if you say, this mango is organic, what is the other mango? Is it inorganic? There is no such thing. So if you say this mango comes from three percent organic content field, now we know how much micronutrients, what are the health benefits, what are the preventive health benefits and many other benefits that are there for the people and the state. <coughs> so it should naturally find a higher shelf in the marketplace. So for the farmer, it is a three… three levels of incentives. Initial incentive is by the government, second by the carbon credit scheme, third in the marketplace it must find a higher uh, shelf. So only if there are incentives like this, there will be farmers. Right now, sixty-two percent of the country's population are farmers and we have made some kind of a survey and we find not even two percent of the farmers want their children to be farmers. So in another twenty-five years, who will be farming the land? If you want farmers to be there after this generation, it's important a farmer earns as much as an engineer or a doctor or an IT professional or a lawyer, he must earn as much, if not more. Otherwise, nobody will be farming in another thirty years' time. This is a dangerous situation. Very well said, Sadhguru. I think the incentives at three level uh, are the ones to take note of and absolutely moving forward, that's the way I couldn't agree more. 
Um, the next question I'd like to ask Sadhguru is that how do you deal with a mindset? Because I always find, you know, in society, uh, once you start something, you know, it, get, it gets a certain momentum, everybody joins it, everybody wants to do something about it. But always after the high is over, people feel that it's somebody else's responsibility. So the urban people always feel that it's the farmer who should be producing. It's not our responsibility. We only go to the supermarket, we pick up the mangoes, we pay for the mangoes. And it's not my responsibility because I'm not directly connected to the farmer. So how do you combat that sort of mindset, urban mindset, that whole in whole, everything is connected, everything affects you? How would you address that? So if it's a problem of forgetfulness, then I think uh, somebody asked me when I was in, uh, uh, I think when I was in uh, Tbilisi in Georgia, somebody asked me, Sadhguru, we are forgetful, what should we do if we want to remember this? I said, uh, it's very simple, tonight, instead of… See, you know food comes from soil, hello? Does everybody know this? Or are you that young, you think it comes from uh, Swiggy? <laughs> no, you know it comes from the land. So, just one meal, just tonight, your dinner instead of food, you just eat soil, you will never forget it. You will remember. <laughs> Brilliant. Forever. <laughs> I'm gonna send out packets of soil after this thing is over. Everybody, please make sure you'll remember it very, very well. Um, Sadhguru, you mentioned in the press conference and uh, it's a sort of heartbreaking observation as well. And uh, it literally brings tears to eyes, you know, whenever you fly, you take an airline flight. Um, out of the window, you mostly see a dry, barren land you mentioned that Western Ghats and some of the few tidbits which are very green and sort of, you know, nice to look at. But apart from that, flying across India, it's a very heartbreaking sight. Kaveri calling has been quite a success. How can we learn from this and what can we do to bring back that green cover back to India? I must uh, share this with you. Most of you would have heard of Rally for Rivers and Kaveri calling. Rally for Rivers uh, as a movement was just twenty-nine days. I drove from southern tip of uh, Kanyakumari to Himalayas. In twenty-nine days, hundred and sixty-two people in this country stood up and gave their voice. Because of that, a policy document we had written, which is seven hundred and sixty-page document, was accepted as official policy. And right now, that is the recommended policy for all the twenty-eight states. Never before in the history of this country, a private agency has written a policy which has been accepted. So after that happened, we knew that we had to manifest something on the ground, so we started Kaveri Calling. Looking at the success of Kaveri Calling, the five UN agencies became our partners uh, because this is the largest program like this on the planet. There is no program this large scale happening in a meticulous way, properly documented, Kaveri Calling is one project like that. Looking at the success of this, government of India made a, a detailed... <coughs> Can I have something warm to drink, please? <laughs> Looking at the success of this uh, Kaveri Calling, government of India made detailed project reports for thirteen river basins. Kaveri Calling accounts for eighty-three thousand square kilometers of Kaveri Basin and 5.2 million farmers who live and work there. So looking at this, they made thirteen uh, detailed project reports for thirteen river basins, which covers sixty-seven percent of India's uh, agricultural land, or sixty-seven percent of India's geography actually. Now, we were… we have been pushing the government to act upon this. Just now when I was on the tour, when I was somewhere, I think when I was in Bulgaria, I got the news that Government of India allocated nineteen thousand crores for these thirteen river projects. So this is the way government policy works. But to get to that point of fund allocation or budget allocation to the river basins, it took me eleven years. <laughs> eleven years of constant work. So I'm saying, if you are not ready for a long haul, you can't do anything significant. This is something we must remember. And as I said, this is not somebody's teaching, 
this is not a religion, this is not morality or philosophy, you want your children to live better than you, that's an intrinsic feeling in every human being. If that is alive within you, you have to ensure that soil in this country is regenerated in the next ten to fifteen years' time, otherwise we will be heading for a very bad situation. Sadhguru, I won't keep you for long, I know you have places to go and things to do, but just perhaps just one or two questions, one light and one slightly heavy if you don't mind. Um, what is the message for youth of tomorrow? If there is one message, a long, nice, proper message if you'd like to deliver <laughs> for the youth of tomorrow, what would that be? Youth of today or tomorrow? Uh, today and tomorrow, both <laughs> <laughs> Youth of tomorrow means I have to talk to the babies. There, that guy <laughs> sitting there <laughs> That is youth of tomorrow. Behind him is youth of today. Because that's who we educate, <laughs> Sadhguru. We've got ten thousand kids in our schools. Yes. So that's the youth of tomorrow that we're educating. And along with me, the whole of Jamnagar and the communities joined in such a way that we would love to support you. What is the message for us? See, today, uh, what personally, children below fifteen years of age, I would not like them to be worried about any concern of the future. They must eat well, play well, learn well, grow up well. See, that's a popular one <laughs> <laughs> It is not for me to make them fearful that tomorrow is going to be bad. I think it's uh, already who are adults who should do this, because it's our generation which has done this. UNFAO said something which deeply pained me is, they said, the food that we are eating today, I want all of you to remember this, Tonight when you eat your dinner, the food that we're eating today actually belongs not to us, not even to these little children, belongs to the unborn child. An unborn child means the most defenseless life, but we are eating up the food of the unborn child. Are we that kind of human beings? That's all I'm asking you. Are we that kind of human beings, we'll eat up the food of the unborn child and make sure they don't have any food to eat? That is where we are going. If we remember this, we must ensure that we put this back into the earth because soil has to be replenished. To replenish the soil, you need plant life and animal life. Without this, you cannot enrich the soil. Everybody should remember this because machines can plow the land, machines cannot enrich the soil. Sadhguru, so we are into education here in Jamnagar. You know, under me we run um, six schools and we got more than 10,000 kids. One of the questions that really bugs me over the years is that everything that is offered in a curriculum, I sometimes find that children are genuinely not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested either. Neither was I ever. I was the worst <laughs> student ever when I was in school. I was beaten up, I was thrown out of the class and all sorts of things. So, genuinely I have this doubt about education and the curriculum that the government sets. But through the life of a child from the age of five to twenty, twenty-three when they finish their education, I find that they're hopelessly lost because of the curriculum not doing the guiding path, the teachers being able to do something but not greatly so because of the lack of a proper directive. Sadhguru, is it not important that we redefine, it's time that we redefine education that is relevant to the twenty-first century, to how the world is changing, you know, how we are using social media, how we are learning through technology, and how COVID has completely sort of shifted our direction in terms of education. What would be your thoughts on that? Well, uh, it's not about twentieth, twenty-first century, it's not about COVID. A human being comes like this. See, there are parrots flying. When a parrot is born, uh, it need not think well I, whether, I, whether I will become a good parrot or not. If a tiger is born, it need not think whether I'll be a good tiger or not. If they eat well, they become good tigers. But that's not the way a human being has come. A human being has come largely unformed. For other creatures, I would say, ninety percent of their life is de determined by nature only ten percent by their individual capabilities. But for a human being, only ten percent is determined by nature, ninety percent is in your hands. 
So a human being needs nurturing. A human being is not to be put into an industrial system of education. Right now education is an industry that you put everybody through the same extruder and you expect them to come out in the same shape and size. So, this is very important. Now, I know this will be a very unpopular thing to say, but let me say it, what's my problem? Because I'm not standing for election, <laughs> I can say what is true. I'm saying every young person must decide, can I give enough time to my child to nurture my child into a wonderful human being. If I don't have that kind of time, let me not have a child. You must decide this because if you cannot nurture a child into something better than yourself, hello <laughs> You must make your children something better than yourself. If you cannot do that, you think just by throwing them into the school something is going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Education system, I cannot talk about it because we have such a mass of children. Transforming education system is not easy. You can do niche kind of schools where certain number of children can go through, but for the mass of millions of children in India who need education, we cannot do that. So I would put it on squarely on the parents. You must decide this before having a child. Are you ready for a twenty-year project? If you're not ready for it, you should not have a child. Okay, one last question and then I won't bother you much after that. <laughs> Sadhguru, this is a slightly different direction of a question. Um, I've read quite a bit from your books. I have seen a lot of the YouTube videos, a lot of the, uh, the app, the content, the episodes, the wonderful things that have been said and done. One thing that always bugs me is, <laughs> um, a lot of the enlightened beings, once they get enlightened, they leave. <laughs> they are usually dead, I'm alive, that's a problem. <laughs> I'll also go one day. But Sadhguru, you got enlightened at a very young age and you decided to stay. And the fruits of your stay, all of us here, across the globe, it's very visible and it's a great honor, privilege and a blessing to have you amongst us walk this earth. So can you Sadhguru tell me please, what is the difference between those enlightened beings and you not leaving us, which is wonderful? Uh, many of them did not leave, they worked, but uh, in ancient times they walked. I'm riding a motorcycle so I'm much faster, but they had to walk. So. <laughs> Uh, this was in Chennai and I was supposed to go for a conference and somebody else was driving and they were driving too slow. In Chennai, if you don't drive aggressively, you won't reach any place. And I have this problem that I have never been late for a single event in my life. So I asked them to the driver to get off and I got in and drove aggressively and you know, in these hotels there is security gates. I went through the security gate without stopping. <laughs> when parked there, ran into the place and I spoke in the conference, then I came out. Then some journalists were asking me, Oh, you know, yogis in the past used to walk, you drive your own car. Then I said, you fool, in the ancient times everybody used to walk, not just the yogis. Now everybody drives and I drive little better than them, that's all <laughs> Thank you <laughs> So because of that, reach is more <laughs> Thank you. On this occasion, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the people of Jamnagar, thank Maharaja Jam Sahib of Jamnagar for giving us his beautiful palace and making this event possible. Also, Sadhguru from the Isha Foundation for accepting our invitation and coming through Jamnagar. Sadhguru had an option of coming through Mundra. We somehow persuaded Sadhguru to come through Jamnagar, not Dwarika as well. So, Sadhguru, on this day, we Thank are very, you. very grateful. Thank you very much for having me here. Can all of you in one voice, when I count one, two, three, can you say, save soil? Huh? One, two, three. Once again, one, two, three. Let's make it happen, huh? We got to make this happen. As a generation, as a generation of people, this is our responsibility. We must make this happen.
अत्रे पधारेल अत्रे पधारेल मंदाता सिंह जी राजकोट स्टेट किशोर सिंह जी पूनम मैडम सांसद हकुबा जाडेजा एमएलए अने विक्रम भाई धारा सभ्य ये सब नो आभार मानो चु आपड़ा गुरुगण आपड़ा मेहमानों सब नो आमंत्रण मानो चु जंगल मनी घोड़ा नो दाता त्रुटि जो रावल जा मने अरे रे जना की दाला दुबार और ज़ोदा तालियाँ हो जाए।